Is the M3 MacBook Air worth it? And if not, which MacBook Air should you go with if you're just an average Joe content creator like me? Well, let's get into it. What's up, my dude? Your friendly neighborhood Tony here, and welcome to the Spare Tech Room, where I try to channel the power of hyperfixation to hopefully help you make better tech choices. Now, a quick confession, I am openly bi-technical when it comes to Mac and Windows, but almost all my creative work, my photo editing, 4K video editing, it's all done on my Mac. And I've been rocking the OG 2020 base level M1 MacBook Air for the past, well, I guess four years now. And I won't lie, this M3 Air is looking real tempting, but do I, and maybe do you, actually need it, or is the M1 good enough? Well, let's break down some stats, some real numbers to kind of give us an idea of the differences, and then we'll go into the real world impact, the things that you're actually gonna notice day to day. And for these numbers, we're gonna be talking about the base level for both laptops. So eight gigs of RAM and the 256 gig hard drive. We're keeping it apples to apples, no pun intended. Although, I'll take the pun. First up, we have a couple of synthetic scores, basically a couple tests that you can run that should give you a general idea of how powerful your computer is. The Geekbench single core score for the M1 Air is 2335, and for the M3, it's 3065. Now that's basically telling us how well your computer can handle basic tasks like web browsing or word processing or even light gaming. And really, the difference is there, but it's not that significant. Honestly, with the M1, there aren't really many if any, single core functions that need improvement. So it's cool to see that number go up, but it's not anything you're ever really gonna notice. Now the Geekbench multi-core score is a bit more significant. There you're talking about 8,311 for the M1 and 11,000 959 for the M3, which is a 44% increase almost. And of course, that's going to impact more complex tasks that you might do. So rendering, code compiling, maybe some more intense gaming, that kind of thing. And 44% is no joke. Overall, Apple claims that the M3 is, of course, faster in every way than the original M1. Whether it's video editing, gaming, 3D rendering, or AI upscaling, you're getting a fairly significant boost across the board. But that still doesn't necessarily mean it's worth upgrading to. Some of the other things you're getting about the same ridiculous battery life from either model, I think it's somewhere around 18 hours, basically all day battery. The screen on the M3 is a bit better in resolution and size, but you know, not by anything significant. Most of us are gonna have it hooked up to a bigger monitor when we're at our desk anyway. And there, the M3 does have a fun little party trick where you can kind of hook it up to two monitors, but only when the laptop is closed. So you have to choose either to go with the two external displays or to go with one external display plus the built-in monitor on the laptop. But hey, you don't get that option with the M1, so that's something. The M3 also has Thunderbolt 4 instead of Thunderbolt 3 USB, which are both ridiculously fast. So if you need Thunderbolt 4 over Thunderbolt 3, I have to really wonder why you're even looking at a MacBook Air. You have to be doing some serious work to need that speed. You do get MagSafe on the M3, which is a nice charging option. It frees up the two USB ports for you as opposed to the M1. For me, I've got my MacBook plugged into a Thunderbolt dock anyway, so I would never really use the MagSafe cable, but if you do, it's there on the M3. Apple also brags about the storage speed in the M3 being so much faster than the M2, but they kind of crippled the M2 storage, so really the M3 is pretty much right on par with the M1 in that regard. Aside from all that, the M3 has a better webcam for sure. It's got Wi-Fi 6E versus Wi-Fi 6 and marginally better speakers, I suppose, but you know, laptop speakers are laptop speakers, so whatever. But yes, the M3 Air, surprise, surprise, is better than the M1. So why am I saying that it might not be the move? Well. The base model M3 Air costs $1,100, and I just found the M1 Air on Amazon for less than 600 bucks. I'll link that in the description box below if you wanna check that out. You might wanna jump on it quick though, cause I don't know how long that price is gonna last. So we're talking about almost half the price, but definitely not half the performance. Again, I've been using a base M1 Air for four years, and although this YouTube channel is pretty new, I've been running a separate channel for the past two years, and with that, I have edited I don't know, 300 videos. We're talking about 4K, 10-bit, 422 footage, color graded with multiple layers and effects, no proxies, and I haven't really had a problem. The timeline scrubs just fine. In fact, better than my old specced out PC. And yes, the M3 would definitely do better, but 
what's the perceivable difference here? If it works already, it doesn't really matter if the newer option is more powerful. It's, it's already doing the thing. Now, the M3 is going to render the final video out faster than the M1, but even here, it's not by much. And the way I see it, is it really worth it to spend twice as much to shave a couple minutes off of your render? I mean, just go get a cup of coffee while it renders or go pet your dog or something. For me, the only other real intense process that I do on the M1 Air is photo editing, where at times I'm dumping hundreds of raw photos into Lightroom. And again, there, the M1 Air is just fine. No real complaints. The only thing I might suggest upgrading on either the M1 or the M2 or the M3 for that matter is the RAM. The base models still come with eight gigs of RAM. And although it's fine, it would be nice to have just a little more juice when it comes to multitasking. So I would recommend upping that to 16 gigs with whichever way you decide to go. The thing is, Apple really kind of shot themselves in the foot when they came out with the M1, but in the best possible way. They made a laptop so great that even four years later, there's no real reason to upgrade. So if you have the M1 Air, keep it. And if you're looking to give Apple a try, check out that link in the description to see if those M1 Airs are still hella discounted. I know, I get it. We all want the new shiny toy. I do too, but that's not what this channel is about. I'm here to help you make better tech choices, and I hope this helped. If it did, drop a like on the video. I'd appreciate it. I also recently put together a video where I recommend two awesome cameras for content creation. So if you're looking to up your game or just to get started with photo and video, you can check that video out right up here, as well as this video right down here where I unbox and give you a full walkthrough of one of those cameras. Also, also, if you have any tech related videos you'd like to see me make, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time in the spare tech room. Be good.